the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joint and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Or rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, in today's Christendom, we think it would be given for God the tithes, or offerings, or sacrifices of our own self, and think that if God could be pleased with these things, and if I am doing right things in the sight of the Lord, some good works in the sight of the Lord, then I will be having the peace of mind. Dear brethren, this is what the legalistical trends of the people teach to you. To be very thoroughly inculcated of Bible doctrine is a tough time for them. They think those who are going for the ministry, they are the people, they have to learn about this. But the one who are really available for Bible doctrine have to be every member of the believer of that great royal family of God who believes in Christ have to be applicable to know this truth. Wrongly dividing the word of truth and not able to really understand what is that, the true peace of God, which shall be with you, requires what that you learn first and then you accept it when you hear and you perceive. And thus, four things are not been possible for you. That is to learn and accept when you hear and perceive, and you be practicing what you have learned and what you have accepted. Then the peace of God shall surpass all your understanding and shall be with you. And this is the true peace which Bible doctrine tells to us. So Apostle Paul tells in Philippians 4, 9, the point which you learned and you accepted after hearing, when you pursued it in me, these things, so that when you're practicing, about this, the God of peace shall be with you. It is not that I follow some XYZ rituals without reality and thinking that the God of peace will be with me because I have told for you, your days have been come to an end, your sorrow days have been gone, and now you will be glad in the Lord is an absolutely sure of a lie. You need to learn and need to accept. When you hear and when you pursue the things pertaining to this unique spiritual life, pertaining to that great Lord, because now in this church age the battle has been intensified, the angelic conflict has shifted the gears, and Satan knew very well that its doom of destruction has been absolutely sure, and it wants to see that though you have been positionally sanctified superior to be then to the chief fallen angel known as Satan, experientially your sanctification process demands a day by day growth, a day by by day work, a day by day procedure, and this day by day procedure, if it is not been taken, you have we have gone the battle and you have lost it out. And that's what Satan can do to you the better. And that is the great problem that is happening around in our pulpits and in our churches today. Not able to understand that apostasy is a place where the a region of rejection of Bible doctrine can be happening and the pulpit is the place where apostasy can be taken to birth and pulpit is the place where apostasy can be made an end. And this is of a great importance that you and I have to note. This is of a great reality that you and I have to learn. But what is happening today in our day-by-day -day process? We are not capable of understanding these simple truths. Why? Wrongly dividing the word of truth, falling into popery. And this popery has become a great realm of satanic core. That's why our Protestant fathers have come out by taking out with the Reformation movement and try to give you the Bible in your hands so that God in his due course of time can send the key people who can rightly divide the word of the Lord and to inculcate for you. But rather you have rejected to know this great peace of God by rejecting to expose yourself to Bible teaching in a day-by-day -day process. You have changed the course by weekly ones rather than it should be for you weekly ones a rest and seven days of time of work. Every day at least one hour you have to take the teaching from a pastor teacher. At least whichever time it is applicable for you, evening 5.30, 6.30, or 7.30, or 
it is better for you to take in the morning time because as goes the doctrine in your mind to control your mind so goes your soul so goes your thinking and so goes the client nation and that is what you and I have to be into this great royal family of God to give number one priority for the word of the Lord how can you really come back to the things to learn and accept which you have not heard and which you have not perceived how can you hear until unless you have a circumcised ear to understand Bible doctrine, a circumcised heart to take into Bible doctrine, and to have the circumcised heart and ear, it requires the privacy of your priesthood to take responsibility for your own decisions and get back into the fellowship of Lord God Almighty. How can you do that? You cannot do that until and unless you take number one priority for Bible doctrine. You cannot and you can never do that. You may be happy to think and to consider about those things which your mind can conceive to the greatest. But you cannot do that, dear brother, and take it granted. You have really a tough time to go through. If you think you can have the peace of mind, even as such many people quote Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14, telling that you will be the head, you will be the ruler, but they are forgetting the conditions if, followed by the condition there, if you follow in my word, if you be faithful to my truth, then only you are going to be the head and not the tail. They want to live those conditions and they want to give only the promises. Exactly the same thing they are doing now in the church, just telling that the peace of God shall be with you, peace be with you, as our Lord told for us. But you are not able to understand, to have that peace, you need to learn, you need to hear, and you need to perceive, and you need to accept that. And that peace which Apostle Paul tells for us, the mind, the same things, is to execute this protocol plan of God to be occupied with Christ. And it demands the ten problem-solving devices, followed by spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy, and then by looking back into spiritual maturity, that's the thing you need to look. And there is no other procedure for you to think. And why Apostle Peter himself declares the declaration they are hard to be understood, the teachings of Apostle Paul, is because they are not stable, they are not consistent, they are not learned the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to control them so that they can learn. It is not that any Greek terminology you need to learn or Hebrew terminology, it is the process of rebound that you need to learn, the privacy of your own soul, the decision for your responsibility of wrong decisions that you have taken for the sin either by thought, word, or deed. Rather than looking upon the true terms and conditions given for us in Bible doctrine, if you consider the secondary things to be primary, then you will never understand the simple example of this escrow term which our Lord uses for us. This escrow term, escrow contract of term between the grantor and the grantee demands a mediator, an escrow officer who is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the grantor being our Lord God the Father, grantee we being the recipients, have been told to the escrow officer, if you fulfill such and such conditions, then only give him this blessing, then only give him this thought, then only giving him this maturity. And if you're not fulfilling these conditions, then you cannot require it. That's the simple term to be called as an escrow. Even Deuteronomy chapter 28 speaks about the escrow terms. If you follow this, then this blessing. If you follow this, then these conditions. The conditions have to be met before you can get the blessing before the Lord. Exactly to want the peace of God from mind of our Christ, it has been told for you to learn and accept when you hear and you pursue. And if you're not hearing and if you're not perceiving the word, how can you learn it and how can you accept it? Then what you have learned and what you have accepted, you need to be practicing even there is a process. And if you're not able to practice it, then there is no way that you can have the peace of God abiding upon you. And it is a fakery to tell that your days of sad days have been gone. The sad days will be gone only to an unbeliever when he believes in Christ. But whereas for a believer, the sad days will multiply after believing in Christ. Do you know why? Because the evil possession have to go, and that evil possession cannot go or thoroughly purged until and unless you take Bible doctrine as number one priority more than the physical breath you take and the physical food you take. It is much more greater now because of the sophisticated spiritual life we have to go through. The Yusabaya, the dying declaration of Apostle Paul in First Timothy telling for us, it is godliness, godliness, godliness. And First Timothy 2.4 tells to us very clearly, everyone should save and come to the knowledge of truth, the epinosis knowledge, the full knowledge of Bible doctrine. So that the manifold wisdom of God, the much variegated colors of God have to be made known through the church. To the angels, what is the grace that he has given for us? But what are we doing, dear brethren? We are happy enjoying our life in useless and worthless things, aren't we? We are happy enjoying our life in these terms and conditions which do not even look for that. 
And it's a great pain to see the people who have to be the time by now communicators are still beginners, learners, are still going along for the same fundamentals. Isn't it a great pain for us to note these things, dear brethren? And the pastors were standing in the pulpits, the miracular workers, the tongues crowd. They say, peace, 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 where there is no peace. The same thing what Jeremiah told. They want to say by swearing the temple, the temple, the temple, oh, earth, earth, earth. They want to tell the peace, 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 like for the temple, 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 they want to swear. And they want to tell to the earth, 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 the word, true words of Jeremiah telling to the earth. That means the inhabitants of the earth. Listen, the true peace is not found when these false prophets tell there is peace. The true peace is found when... When you really obey the commandments of God, Jeremiah 7, he said, I have not given this law for them. Why? The reason is they have been told only to love the Lord and to obey his words. Since the hardness of the heart came along, they wanted to get back into fellowship. Some ritualistical codes have been given. But prior to that, what was the condition? Hear and obey. That's the simple condition. What our Lord has given to Adam as well in the Garden of Eden. But the faith, as such, when we are failing today to hear and to fail, we are not exposing ourselves to learn doctrine, ignorance, arrogance, cognizance towards the less patterns, indifference towards the pastor teacher who is teaching to you, failure to expose yourself, your negative attitudes towards doctrine to come daily one hour. The trends of the church have to be changed totally. It is not weekly one Sunday you get to the church. It has to be every day you get to the church and Sunday you take rest. Exact pattern what our Lord follows. Renovation of the earth in six days, literally, and the seventh day taken rest. The same procedure should happen to you so that you can renovate your soul in a day-by-day -day process after believing in Christ. The restoration work we need to learn, we need to tell. Does not the Bible tell for us every day the renovation of your thinking has been required? Does not the Bible teach for you every day your grace has been renewed? Does the Lord say, weekly once I am going to renew your grace upon you? No, Lamentation 3.21 quotes, every day his mercies are great. They are renewed day after day. What else do we require, dear brothers? What else do we require? We do not have any clear evidence. That the word of the Lord has been told for us to grow up in grace in a day-by-day -day process? Or else you want to go and cross-check again and again to think, is there any greater evidence than this? And turn unless you take priority number one for Bible doctrine, the peace of God shall not come upon thee. Take it granted. And turn unless you take by the matter ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and disturb your soul with Bible doctrine, you cannot have your sound healing to your body as well as to the soul. In John 5, 4, we note the angel of the Lord coming once. And they were constantly eagerly waiting for the angel of the Lord to appear so that they could have their healing to be done. And it was for a due season and it is to come. But now we don't have that angel of the Lord. We have the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And when you take in Bible doctrine, number one priority in a day-by-day -day process, then no matter what it is, your soul will be disturbed with that water, cleansed with that water. The evil possession will be gone out. I'm not talking about the demonic possession, demonic possession to the unbelievers, but not to the believers. But there is an evil possession of evil thoughts of this cosmos diabolicus headed by Satan to fulfill you the lust patterns as per 1 John 2, 5 through 16, 15 through 16 and 17. And furthermore, it teaches to you XYZ trends. Christian moral degeneracy, Christian immoral degeneracy, self-righteousness, indulgence, and self-indulgence of arrogance attitude to correct yourself. Trends towards legalism and trends towards lusciousness or antinomianism. That is what it is going to happen. That's what the evil is. And that evil has to be thoroughly cleansed out day by day process. And dear brethren, this is what you and I have to look. To have the peace of God, you need to learn and you need to accept. When you hear and when you perceive. After hearing and perceiving, you need to practice them what you have learned. And if you're not learning, you have lost it. You have gone to it. Dear brethren, ponder over these things as we shall continue. In the next step, if you want to have the peace of God, learn Bible doctrine, know the unique spiritual life, know the trends of spiritual self esteem or spiritual autonomy, and then by spiritual maturity, look back to the privileges of Bible doctrine and learn and apply to the truth. And if you're not, Lord help you. We shall continue in the next step. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was going to fellowship you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. Father, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.